Hi and welcome. In this video I would like to talk about three tips that I've picked up uh, over the time that will hopefully ease your microcontroller development. First I would like to talk about stack painting, what it is and what it can be used for. And then I'll be talking about how to find spurious watchdog resets in your microcontroller system. And finally, I'll quickly go over how you can generically instrument your microcontroller unit and why you would want to use that and how. First, a quick primer on heap and stack. You generally have two different memory sections in your system. One is called the heap, which grows from top to bottom, so from the low to the high addresses. In embedded systems, this usually is static, so it cannot grow during runtime. On systems with dynamic memory, this is also the memory location that you get memory from when you make a call to malloc. Then you have the stack region, which grows bottom to top, so from the high to low addresses. And in between the two, there usually is unused space. So here is an illustration of this. You have the heap area here on which the global variables and static function variables are stored. On the stack you'll find the local variables and return addresses of function calls. And the stack rows from bottom to top so the values are appended on the stack. They get pushed on here and the stack pointer is decremented from its old value to its new value. In between the two there's empty space, usually unused. So now the question is what happens when your stack area becomes so large, for example by recursion or by using large amounts of local data that it intercepts with the heap area. And the answer is pretty simple, it just wreaks haywalk. Uh, usually your system will crash because when the two areas overlap you'll have a heap write when you're actually trying to write on your stack. So if you're writing on local variables you'll corrupt heap data and vice versa. So usually when you write into the heap you will destroy one or more of uh, the return addresses that have been stored on the stack and your system will just jump to the middle of nowhere. So this is why you want to know how large your stack can become in the worst case to know how much safety margin you still have. And the idea is the following. You do a so-called stack painting. So all the unused memory that I showed before, you just paint it with some pattern like um, hex A5 in my case. And later on, if you want to know how much stack was used in the worst case, you just do a linear sweep. So you start at the uh, heap section and walk down the memory until you reach a point where the pattern has been destroyed, where it has been overwritten. And this is the location where the uh, worst case stack was at. So let me illustrate this here. Let's say we have our heap and after the uh, startup of our system we have uh, painted the stack with uh, this hex A5 pattern all the way down to the stack. And then we let our system run and through function calls the stack will grow and it will shrink again. But every time that the stack goes up here it will basically destroy the lowest version of our pattern. So let's say our stack went up to here and later on we want let's say the stack pointer is now here um, but in the worst case it went up to here and through the return addresses and local variable it has most likely destroyed our A5 uh, pattern. Then later on we uh, walk our heap because we want to find out how large our stack has been and we start out here and check if the pattern is still intact. Yep it is. Walk to the next address. Still is. Walk up to the next address. Still is walk up here and we see for example 0, 0 and we'll know that the stack has been at least to this location. So by that we can calculate this is uh, our maximum stack size and we know that we have this safety margin here. One thing that can be really horrible is when you have a microcontroller system in the field and you have the watchdog functionality enabled because Obviously you can never uh, know that there are no bugs in there. And it works most of the time, but it resets once 
every four weeks or so. Tracking down the source of this problem can be really painful and I've had to deal this in my job about two years ago and was kind of horrible. So I'll tell you how I finally tracked down the bug there. So to explain this we just need to know a bit about how heap initialization works. So when you're programming your system you just assume that the heap and the global variables and the static variables in there have been initialized properly with its initialization values. Now this is a perfect, perfectly fine assumption but obviously this has to be uh, done by something and usually this is done by your standard library or the CRT routines within that standard library. Because when the system comes up electrically obviously all RAM is not initialized. There is a location somewhere in your flash um, where the init values for your variables are stored. And the CRT routine at startup does the following. It reads out the flash and writes them to those locations. This means that all global variables are uh, overwritten after startup. So when you're in your main function, they have all been initialized already. But it is possible to put variables in a separate section, we'll call that the no init section. And in this no init section, you will be able to address certain variables here, um, but they won't be initialized by the CRT routine, so they'll just be ignored. And they will, at reset, have the value that they originally had when the system came up. So they'll usually be undefined. Now when I say usually undefined, I mean when the system really first comes up, they'll obviously be undefined because the RAM is just initted with some uh, garbage values. But when your system does a watchdog reset, they won't have garbage values, but they'll just keep the value that they had before. So the idea is the following. We reserve some space in this no init section and we put an array in there. Then we install a timer IRQ with the highest priority and what it does is it continuously writes the source instruction pointer into a bounded buffer that is located in that no init array. So it will execute every millisecond or so and it will write the location that the instruction pointer was at when the ISR was called into some bounded buffer. Now on a reset we'll just dump this array. So what we will see there is where the location was where the microcontroller hung itself up. Because we'll see some instruction pointer over and over again in this bounded buffer because it stayed in that code location so long that it actually triggered the watchdog reset. So again to illustrate this I'll just place my bounded buffer here and my bounded buffer will have four entries one two three four and we'll register an interrupt service routine or ISR for short which gets executed per periodically and has highest priority in the system and let's say some code runs somewhere and it gets uh, interrupted by this interrupt service routine then what the interrupt service routine is it looks at what location did it here come from? This would be this location. And it writes that into that bounded buffer here. So now we have some address here. And the next time uh, the interrupt service routine is called, it writes the address here, 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 and it overwrites always the oldest address. So it circles around this bounded buffer here. Now let's say we walk onto some code which triggers the watchdog reset, then basically this code will be executed so long that it finally triggers the watchdog reset. Now what will happen is our ISR is continuously executed and it will write this X location everywhere here. So at some point the watchdog reset is triggered and the heap area here is reinitialized by the CRT routine. But this area that we placed in the no init routine is not. So these x values, the locations that actually uh, cause the hang, are preserved. And the first thing that we do in our system is we dump the um, contents of this bounded buffer here. 
So we'll see x, 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 x here, and we'll know the location x was where it was last at before the watchdog just reset the whole system. One thing that is really simple but very helpful nevertheless that I like to use very often is generic instrumentation. And what I mean by that is just the following. Imagine you have a AVR microcontroller and you want to generate a PWM signal. Now obviously when you look into the datasheet you can find out what values and what bits you need to set to get the waveform that you want. But especially with PWM generation there are tons of modes and it's often kind of fiddly and it's easier to just play around with it until the waveform that comes out just works because it can be hard to get it right on the first try. But obviously you don't want to flash your microcontroller every time you just fiddle around with one setting. Um, you make a change to the OCR or ICR register, you make a change in some flags and you don't want to flash over and over and you don't want to install a special code that is just for fiddling around there. So the idea is to have a generic instrumentation facility, a facility that just reads and writes uh, from memory mapped I.O. and have the PC control all the data, have, have it resolved all the register locations, have it resolved all the bit values for your PWM and so on. So basically for an AVR microcontroller the interesting stuff is memory mapped I.O. in the lower 60 hex um, bytes here. And you will find the CPU registers in the first 32 bytes and you'll find the control registers, the timer registers, ICR, OCR, whatever, you'll find that in there. So the idea is just to have a generic facility which can basically just read and write memory bytes or words and return them to the PC. And the PC just does the resolving. For example, if you want to toggle something, some bit in the ICR register, um, the PC would know what address that would resolve to. I'm just making this up now. On the PC you would know that this is hex 31 and obviously you, you would basically just send the command set register 31 to some word value for example 3FF or something like that. So basically um, this is a very dumb facility on the microcontroller. It's very generic. You can just read and write in I.O. space, um, but it's very powerful nevertheless because you can actually use that to read out the contents of global variables or static variables. Um, you can, if you have an ELF binary, uh, you can use NM to find out where the compiler put those and you can get their value if you just issue get commands. So this is a technique I find very useful and that I frequently use. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed it and tune in the next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.